And here in chapter 11, we're going to do two sections on probability. This first section, of course, is the introduction to the idea of probability. So often, we'll just write P for probability, and then whatever you're talking about, like event A. So event A could be something like, I've got a coin, and there's a heads and a tails. So if I flip the coin once, what's the probability of getting a heads? So that's an event A. That I actually got heads that time. So in general, what we're using is the basic definition, which is the number of ways A can occur over the total number of possibilities. So for example, number one is going to be the coin. So you flip a coin. First of all, we need to know the total number of possibilities. Yes, yes, of course, there's tails, there's heads, there's two possibilities. But when I do that, that's also called the sample space, or what's all the possibilities. So just to be more formal, the sample space if you flip a coin once, there's only two possibilities, tails or heads. And then find the probability that it's a T. So then just following this little fraction right here, the number of ways that a T can occur, well, that's only one. And the total number of possibilities, there's two sides to a coin. So it's gonna be one, that's a T over two total. So one out of two, or in other words, 50%. Then make it a little more fun. How about if you flip two coins? Heads, heads. So for example, number two, flip two coins. And it actually doesn't matter if you flip one coin twice or you flip two coins once. It's the same idea. So the sample space, what are all the possibilities? So there could be tails, tails. There could be tails, heads. There could be heads, tails. And right now you're saying, wait a second, those two are the same thing. Au contraire, mon frère. Because look, I've got two different coins. One's a quarter, one's a nickel. It could be that the nickel had tails, and then the quarter had heads, so that's this one. Or it could be the other way around, that the nickel has heads and the quarter has tails. So those are different. And then it could be that it's heads, heads. And then find the probability that it's heads first and tails second. So as you can see, there's one, two, three, four total. So that goes on the bottom. And then out of these, how many have the H first and then the T? Only this one. So it's one out of four. One that has HT out of the total of four. All right, and then for example number three, suppose that you have a die. So when you got two of them, that's dice. One of them, that's a die. And this one has six sides. It's a regular playing die for playing Yahtzee or whatever games you like to play. So it's got six sides. So this is example number three. Roll a die. For question A, what's the probability that you roll a six? So 
I'm talking about, I rolled it. Ching, 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 ching. Oh, I got a six, look, I won. What's the chances of that? Well, there's only one side that has a six and there's six sides total. So this would be one out of six. Part B, what's the probability that I roll an even number? So the even numbers would be two, four, and, and, and six. So two, four, and six, that means there's three of them out of the total six. And then that should be reduced, so that means it's gonna be one half. So that means whenever I roll this die, there's a 50% chance I'm gonna even number. Let's see how it works. First try, first try, winner, winner, yes. So it should be 50% of the time. So half of the time it should be even and half of the time it should be odd. Of course, with real life, it's not always gonna go even, odd, even, odd, even, odd. Oops, that's odd. But anyway, so they can go in streaks of, it goes odd, 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 and then might go even, even, odd, odd. But in the long run, if you do it, thousands and thousands and thousands of times, then 50% of the time it'll be even and 50% of the time it'll be odd. Now suppose that example number four, suppose that we have some chips and I'm not talking about Doritos, although that would be nice, but I'm talking about poker chips. So they got two blue, two red, oopsie, two blue, two white, two red. All right, so what's the probability, if I close my eyes, what's the probability that I get a red one? I think I should have mixed them up first. Nope, I got a white one. Let me mix them up. So what's the chances? And I really am closing my eyes. I'm covering it with my hands, my hand. Did I get... Uh, blue. Hey, was I supposed to get a blue? Anyway, so that's going to be example number four. So there's two blue, two white, and two red chips. So then what's the probability that you get a blue? And as you have to tell young kids, each person gets one turn. So there was a total of two, four, six chips, and two of them were blue. And so two out of six, or you reduce that, that's gonna be one third. Now, suppose that you've got a red chip, a blue chip, a die and a dime. Now we're gonna make a fun game. So if you were going to pick two of these things, then what are all the possibilities? So in other words, it could be these two, you get to keep those, or someone could say, I'm gonna pick these two, or somebody's gonna say, I'm gonna pick these two. So this doesn't really matter what number's on there, just somebody's gonna say, I want these two, or I'm going to randomly pick those two. So what are all the possibilities? So for example number five, there's a red chip, a blue chip, there was a dime, and there's a die. And then you get to pick two. What are all the possibilities? Or in other words, what is the sample space? So I'm gonna to need to write down all the possibilities. So 
for the red chip, I'll just use R. For the blue one, I'll use B. For the D, I could use dime. And then, I can't use D again. I'll pretend it's dice, because the C is missing. So I'll call it dice. That's sort of funny. And basically, we have to then write down what are all the two-letter combinations. So you can start writing down, and I would start with the first one, and then pick this as the second one. Then the first one, and then what if this is the second one? And then this is the first one, etc. So the first possibility would be get a red and then a blue. Then I could get a red and then a dime, a red and then a C. So now I've done everything where just noticed I forgot that. I've done everything where an R is paired with something else. Now for B, so the B needs to be paired with everything else. Now the person is taking them and they're picking them up, taking them away. So it doesn't really matter which one's in the left hand or which one's in the right hand. So right there, it doesn't matter if I put R and then B or B and then R. If they're gonna have the two things, they can put them in one hand if they want and take them away. So, in other words, once I put RB, then I don't need to put BR. So you can move on to the next one, which would be BD and then BC. And now move on to starting with the letter D. So D, C. And now I have every possibility. So if I pick two, a D and an R. Then R and D have to show up in here somewhere. There we go. Then for the question, what is the chances or probability? So probability is the more math term. Chances is more how people speak in English. What is the chance? Well, that's not how you speak. What are the chances? Oh my goodness, I thought I was speaking English. Okay, there we go. What are the chances of getting the only one that was really worth money, the dime? So in total, there's one, two, three, four, five, six. So six goes on the bottom. And now, how many have a dime? So it was D for dime. So one, two, three. So three out of six had a dime. Or in other words, that's gonna be one half once you reduce it. Now, for example, number five. Or is this six? This is six. What's the probability? And see, probability is such a long word, I'd rather, I'd rather write the word chances. But anyway, I interchanged them. Find the probability that a randomly chosen person, let's say that's you. What are the chances? Oh, this is supposed to say chosen. has their birthday the same as mine. In other words, October 13th. So we're just gonna go with the idea that there's 365 days in a year. It actually is more complicated with the leap year every four years and etc. etc. but let's just go more straightforward. How many times a year is there on October 13th? Only once, that's my birthday. And there's 365 days total, so this was for October 13th, and there's 365 days total in a year. So the chances that if I just randomly picked one person and said, is your birthday October 13th? It's a very small chance. It's one divided by 365. It's a 0 0.003 chance. Or if you change this to a percent, then move the decimal over by two, 
So it's less than 1% chance that a randomly selected person has a birthday, same as me, October 13th. Then for example number seven. Now we're gonna work with three coins. So you randomly flip three coins. This one was tails, tails, heads. So what are all the possibilities or what's the sample space? So flip three coins and again, it could be that you flip three coins at the same time, or you flip one single coin and do that randomly three times. Then what are all of the heads and tails combinations? Which is another way to say Find the sample space, because in the homework, that's what they're going to say. Find the sample space. But this is what it's talking about. Find all the different combinations. So I could just use a capital H for heads and a capital T for tails. And then you just pick one and say, well, it could be that all three of them were heads, heads, heads. Then it could be that it was heads, heads, and tails. Now, just like I have these three different coins, so the first one could be heads, the second one could be heads, and the last one is tails. So in this case, the last one is the dime that's tails. But another possibility is that it was the nickel that had tails, and these two had heads. So a completely different possibility is HTH. And then it could have actually been the first one that was the T and then the two H's after that. So I like to organize these like this. They're all H's, then just one T, and you just move the T through the different possibilities. And then it could be one H with two T's. And just like this T had to go through the different possibilities, now the H needs to do the same thing. So then it could be T, H, T, 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 H. And then the last possibility is, oops, there's only three, T, T, T. So then part A, find the probability uh, of two H's exactly. In other words, not more than two H's, not less than two H's, but exactly two of them. Well, because I organized it this way, I can see this one, this one, and this one are the ones that have two H's. So out of the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight possibilities, it was three of them. So that would be three of them that have two H's and then I counted them I think it was eight right well there's another way to do it rather than having to count which yes there's eight there's another way to do it imagine that these blanks represent all of these little three letter combinations and I want to know when I make this how many am I supposed to have total well, for this first one, it could be either an H or a T. So there's two possibilities. And for this one, it could be either an H or a T. So there's two possibilities. And for this one, there's either an H or a T. So two possibilities. And then you multiply them. Two times two will be four. Four times two is eight total. So that's a fast way to find the total. So this is writing out the sample space. And if you just need the total, you can use this little multiplication rule. Okay, so anyway, there's three of them. 
that have two H's in it, and there's eight total. So that would be three out of eight. If I wanted to do decimal, three out of eight is a 0.375. Or as a percent, that's 37.5%. So you can now see why math people like to use abbreviations, because to write out probability every time we do one of these, it's much easier, faster, to just write the letter P for probability. So then, what's the probability of at least one T? So this has at least one T, that does also, this does, this does. Anytime the letter T shows up, they count. So actually, the only one that isn't is that one. So that means there's one that is not got a T. So for at least one T, that's all of these over here. So that means that it's going to be seven out of eight. Okay, then for the last part of this section, cards. So, if you know cards and you play cards, that's cool. We do. I'm actually sitting at our dining table, and all of these things that you see here are part of our entertainment in the evening. Anyway, so with the cards, there's kings, there's jacks, sixes, there's spades, there's clubs. If you don't have cards or you don't know about cards, and then in the homework, it asks you. So if you just Google card playing card deck, I, this was like the one of the first. Oh, and then I went to images. So Google playing card deck and then images, and then you can see here's the kings, the queens, the jacks, or if you go across, these are the clubs the spades, the hearts, and the diamonds. Sorry, I need another paper. Here we go. So for, uh, it's example number eight. So with the cards, there's 52 playing cards. And let's say H is going to stand for getting a heart. And then J will be a jack. Okay, so part A. What's the probability of getting a heart? So there's 52 cards total, and for the hearts, there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So there's 13 hearts out of 52 total. And then 13 out of 52, oh, that's 25%. So that equals one quarter or 25%. Now that is one way to do it. You could also say, well, there's hearts, spades, clubs, and diamonds. And then they just repeat over and over again. So, my question was hearts. So if you have four suits and then somebody says, well, what fraction of them is hearts? That's one out of the total four. So you first have to look at the total, four, and then one of them is heart. So there's different ways that you can get to the same answer. So I didn't actually have to, in this case, count all 13 of them. I could have just said there's one, set of hearts out of to total of four. Then for part B, 
what's the probability of this? So we did this symbol a long time ago with sets, and this basically means and. This symbol means or. So it's saying that it has to be a heart and it has to be a jack. So it has to be a heart means it has to come from this row right here. So my pen, that's laying on the hearts. The jacks, that's this column right here. And then it has to be where these two pens overlap. That means, no, come back here. That means it has to be that card right there. And there's only one of them that is the jack of hearts. So there's one jack of hearts out of the 52 total. This fraction's already reduced, so I could actually leave it like that. Then, what about this symbol? So that means or. So if you're to pick a card, it could either be a heart or it could be a jack. Could even be both a heart and a jack. So when we say or in math, it's usually the inclusive or. So it's not like um, I'm gonna drive to the store or my wife is gonna drive to the store. Well, in reality, We've both got our own vehicle. We could both drive to the store. So anyway, in math, the or could mean one of them or the other, or it could even be both. So for the hearts, there's 13 of them. For the jacks, there's four of them. So it seems like it should be 13 plus four is 17. But that's not quite right because when I count the hearts, I'm going to count that jack of hearts. So that is 13 cards going across right there. That's 13. And then if you count the other jacks, that's going to be 14, 15, and 16. So it's going to be 16. So there's 16 of those out of 52 total. And this either needs to be reduced or write it as a decimal. So 16 divided by 52, that is a 0 0.308, or that is 30.8%. Okay, there's one more we need to do. Don't go yet. Just one more. Part D. What's the probability that it's H with a bar over it? The bar over it means the opposite. So it's basically saying it's not an H. So it's not a heart. So this equals the probability that it is not a heart. So you could go back to doing it this way. So there's the four suits, diamond, spades, clubs, hearts. And then, how many of those are not hearts? Three of them. So there's three of them out of the four that are not hearts. Now another way to look at it is, so I took these off and counted them as the not hearts. Another way to do it is, you could say there's the total, four, and I'm then gonna subtract this one. And what's left? Three out of the original four cards. So a slightly different way to look at it, counting these and counting one, two, three, or saying I'm gonna not heart, and then what's left? Still three. So for it to be not a heart, that's three out of the four suits, or that's 0.75 or 75% of them. And we'll continue with probability in section 11.2.